Oh, sorry. Hi, uh, I think, can you hear me now? Okay, great. So let me go over a couple of problems from uh, homework, okay? Uh, the first problem is as follows. If the function hx equals x plus x, no restriction on x, okay? Find uh, the value of the inverse uh, uh, at six, okay? Well, uh, this is impossible to, to find the formula for the inverse function. It's difficult, you can, right? But there's no need to do that, okay? First of all, this function is the increasing function, okay? When x increases, square root x increases, so x plus square root x increases, so the inverse exists, okay? It's clearly the domain, the domain of h is going to be from zero uh, to positive infinity, right? And the range of h is also from zero to infinity. It's very obvious, okay? So the inverse exists. All you have to do is just to, to by guess and try, okay? What value, you know, you know y equals hx, right? Then x is going to be uh, the inverse of y, right? So if you, you just need to see what x gives you <laughs> the value, of, uh, yeah. Uh, right, so you just need to find out what uh, find the x, okay? So that uh, the value of x equals six, then x is going to be uh, uh, the value of the inverse function of six. So, so how to do to solve this equation? But, but clearly, you don't need to try to solve it. Just four plus square four is going to be six, right? So therefore, h of four is going to be six. So that implies four is going to be is going to be this, okay? Okay, so that's it. You solve this problem. Another uh, another problem is, uh, all right, this is a, a function f of x equals 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus 6x plus 5, right? And we want to find out uh, the value, not H, F. We want to find out the, ins, the derivative of the inverse function evaluated as a five. Okay. Uh, uh, before I do that, I just want to know, okay, we don't need to verify that the inverse exists. We just assume that the inverse exists, right? So first of all, uh, you needed to evaluate, find out what is this, right? The value of uh, of the inverse function at five, okay? And then by same idea, okay? By same idea, you all have to do is just look at solve for x, right? Equals five, okay? Solve this equation for x, okay? Once you get x, then X is going to be the you know, the value of the inverse function five, okay? but then you look at this, look at this. It's also obvious, right? When x equals zero, you get a five, right? Just look at it, plug zero for. Sometimes you can try one, sometimes try two, but this clearly when x equals zero, the value is five. So therefore, zero is going to be this, okay? Right. Then, next step, you need to write down the formula for, uh, you needed to write down the formula for, uh, for the derivative, okay? According to the formula, okay, it's gonna be this, but you already know the value, so it's gonna be f comma zero. All I have to do is just find the derivative function, evaluate at zero, okay? Then you find the derivative, it's nine x squared, 8x plus 6, okay, right? Find the derivative. Then f of prime zero is going to be 6, right? You plug zero for x, then you get 6. So finally, you write down the answer. It's going to be 1 over 6. All right. Uh, this is the two problems. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, we, we discussed it before the class. 
Uh, okay, my question is, can we find, can we find a, a, a formula for, for the inverse? Uh, well, if you want to find the formula for the inverse, you need to look at the equation, okay? You need to look at the equation. The equation, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, <laughs> it's a polynomial degree three, right? Yeah, you solve for this for, 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 for X, but there's no, it's, there's no formula similar to the quadratic formula, okay? But for polynomial degrees three or four, you do have a formulas to find a, a solution. But this, you cannot find out in the regular mathematical book, okay? That's called the mathematical formula for engineers. Maybe you can find the formula, okay, in general. The formula is that the roots of this one can be expressed in terms of the coefficients, okay? There's three roots there, okay? But that complicated, involves radical, radical. So we, we, I never memorize that. Okay, <clears throat> you can type in, type. Uh, uh, you can search on internet; it's easy to find out. Okay, but then once you get a formula, it's very difficult to to differentiate. <coughs> so we don't recommend that method. All right, so today's section 6.2, okay. This is about uh, exponential function, okay. This is about exponential function and their derivatives. So first of all, what's the definition of exponential function? <coughs> well, if, uh, if m is a, is a positive integer, right? Okay, then a to the m is defined to be a times a times a, right? It's easy to understand, m times, m times scale, okay? We know that, All right? Now how to, yeah, this doesn't matter whether a is positive or negative, okay? Right. Now we have to define the nth root of a. <clears throat> So uh, if A is a positive, okay, then we just need to focus on positive, okay? Then A to the one of N, okay? N is a positive integer, okay? Then one, uh, this is called the nth root of A, okay? This is also denoted by this notation in some book, right? So this is, is the number Okay, whose nth power is a, okay? So you know, uh, namely, uh, one over n, uh, a to the one over n is x, and if only if x to the n is equal to a, okay? So the nth power should be, right? And that is a, a positive number, okay? Because a is positive, okay? If only if a is positive, okay? All right, so that is a uh, definition. Now, then you get lots of, uh, uh, you get lots of uh, uh, election numbers, right? Using this, okay? So for example, uh, uh, yeah, a to the one half is simply the number square a, okay? Yeah. And uh, more in, ma in many cases, this is irrational number, okay? If a is, uh, uh, for example, eight to the one third, that's gonna be two because two cubed is gonna be eight, okay? <clears throat> yeah, but eight to the one half, which is square of eight, and that is two square of two, this is a, <clears throat> you know, is a irrational. Okay. But it's defined, but it's hard to understand that the, the number, only the calculate uh, uh, can, give you the approximation of this number, okay? So then it, this is a real number, right? Then, then you can define for 
for positive integers mn, okay? a to the m of n is defined to be, first of all, you have to make sure that when a to the when the n is defined. Then you get a number, then it's n, right? That's the definition. Or you calculate the n, m's power first, then you find the n's root. Okay, either way, so they are equal. All right, so now, uh, <laughs> So it's defined for it. Then if it's negative, then this is defined to be this in the denominator. Okay, so now what do you have? we have, right? A to the X for any ratio number, it is defined, okay? So now, so A to the X is defined for any rational number, X. Any ration number is plus or minus m over n, right? Negative or positive must be a fraction. And then by limit, you can define uh, uh, it as a, as a power function, as an exponential function using for any x, okay? For any real number, okay? So a to the x is going to be the limit of n approaches infinity, a to the xn. Uh, uh, where xn are, are rational numbers. Okay, so then it's, you, you define, uh, you define the exponential function for any real number, okay? Uh, uh, approaching, approaching x as n approaches infinity. So, but so step by step, finally you define the exponential function. It's not easy. <coughs> to define exponent function. So, so what's the meaning, right? A to the pi, sorry, not A to the pi, uh, X, uh, for example, yeah. two to the pi is defined. And pi is the irrational number, okay? Pi is the irrational number. There is a sequence of rational number approaching pi, then, two to the pi is defined to the limit. Uh, two to the pi is, de is defined to the limit, two to the uh, Rn, okay? Well, uh, Rn is rational. Uh, yeah, this is a rational and the limit of Rn is the pi, okay? Because there's a sequence of numbers that we can always find because they are, <coughs> Okay, but the two to the pi, let's estimate two to the pi, what is the value of that? Two to the pi is less than two to the 3.15 uh, and greater than two to the 3.14, right? Okay, this is pi is between those two numbers, okay? Then you can estimate it. Okay. And the both 3.14, 3.15 are ratio numbers. Okay. All right, so now we get an exponential function for a greater than zero a is not going to be one, okay? F of x equals a to the x is called an exponential function. Okay, it's called exponential function. And why x cannot be 1? Because 1 to the x, 1 to the x is always equal to 1. So it's a trivial case, it should be true. All right, so we have an exponential function and uh, we want to understand the exponential function. There's the two graphs we have to know, okay? The first graph is when a is greater than 1, then then uh, the graph of y equals a to the x, let's look at, okay? First of all, is, uh, x should be, yeah, a to the zero is gonna be one. A to the one is a, right? So this is a, uh, this is a point a, and this is a one, right? And then, and then uh, this is a point when, uh, sorry. Yeah, this is one, not a.
Let's draw that line. So this is a one, right? One and one. Then A is where then uh, this is a one and A. So the graph, yeah, A to the negative one is gonna be one of A. One of A is negative one here. One of A is here. So the graph looks like that. Right? So this is a graph Y equals A to X. <coughs> right? So it's punishing groups, you see. And uh, when a is greater than zero, less than one, okay. and the y equals a to the x, uh, okay. So we have the same result, right? When x equals zero to one, but when x equals one, this is less than one, right? It's a is less than one, okay. When a equals negative one, that's a to the negative one, right? And one of a, so that's greater than one. So if we draw the graph, we have to be very careful. If this is a one, this is a one, a is less than one, it's here, one and a, <clears throat> right? And here, negative one a is, uh, is, uh, is greater than one. Now, a to the one of a is greater than one. So that's why it's grew, graph looks like that, right? So this is a decreasing function. And they're related, okay? Those two are related because y equals a to the x equals, equals one over a to the negative x. So one over a is a part greater than one if a is less than one, right? And then, then, uh, yeah, the, then this is a, a positive number, a greater than one, and one of it is greater than one to the negative x. So that, those two graphs, yeah, you can get a graph from above by, by, by refracting above the y-axis, okay? <coughs> yeah. Right, that's all about uh, uh, the explanation of function. There are some formulas we cannot prove here uh, for the explanation function. Okay. The first formula is a to the alpha times a to the beta. It should be a to the alpha plus beta. Okay. It's easy to see when alpha beta are positive integers. Okay. Then a to the alpha over a to the beta is gonna be a to the alpha minus beta. It's going to be a to the beta minus alpha. Uh, second, well, a to the alpha and to the beta is an a to the alpha times beta. Okay. What else? Yeah, we also have a b to the alpha equals a to the alpha, b to the alpha. And A over B to the alpha is going to be A to the alpha, B to the alpha. Okay, so those are the very basic formulas we we really needed to know about. Uh, yeah, we don't make mistakes using our formula. Okay, so uh, it's easy to explain the formula. Like, let me explain to this one. Let's explain to use this formula. Why do it's two square cubed, right? Why it's a two to the Two to the three, uh, two times three, which is two to the six. Why? Right. Well, this is a uh, this can be the reason. Uh, it is like that, right? Two square, two square, two square. How many twos there, right? You have three twos. That's why. That's going to be uh, 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 two times three. The power. Right. Yeah, you just need to count how many factors here. You have uh, two factors here, two factors here, two factors here. And three, two factors, that's three times two, six factors. All right. All right, now we want to, okay, we want, you never, for example, we never heard about the, the derivative. We want to find out the derivative of a to the x. Okay, we want to find out this. We're trying to find 
<clears throat> we want to find this derivative, okay? And as a derivative exponential function. Okay, how do you do that? Well, you look at textbook or you look at all the formula you learn, no, but you can only, then you try and find it using the definition. The definition says that the derivative is in the limit. Uh, no, this is zero. Okay. A to the X plus H minus A to the X divided by H. Okay. Right, that's the definition of the derivative. Uh, right. Then now I work, how can I find the derivative? Well, there's a common factor a to the x and a to the h minus a to the x, h, right? So this is a common factor. I can take it out. Right, right? I can take it out. Yeah, think about right. So then, uh, Then you take a to the x out, and what I get is a to the h minus one divided by h. Okay, I can, this is a constant with respect to h, so I can even take the h out. Now, what am I gonna do with this? Does this one has a limit or not, right? But this term is independent. Independent of x. That's very uh, important observation. So you had a project, right? And uh, trying to find the formula for the derivative at a to the x. So you end up with this limit. We're almost done, right? If, if your scientists are doing some kind of experiment here, right, you end up with this. And you look at the textbook, you cannot find anything about this limit. What is the next step? Then say, oh, I cannot find the limit. I cannot uh, stop here, then say, I, I know where I can find the formula. Give up. So this is not, <laughs> then you're not a good scientist, okay, or mathematician. Then you should be excited. Oh, I got something here, strange, you know, right? Then, <laughs> Uh, then you name it, okay, I'm going to call this one, if it only depends on A, right? Then A to the X minus, okay, you let this one. All right, so this is only, this is the, determined by the, uh, by the value of A. All you have to do is try to prove this one has a limit, okay? Then you say, I got a formula, it's a to the x times some function depends on a, less than to do with x. That's a good formula, okay? That's a really good formula. And uh, this function L, L of a, you study, you spend time trying to understand, okay? It's less than to do x, it only depends on a. And finally, uh, you figure it out, uh, you, you, you know, you, you describe this function. This is also a brand new function. So we get a brand new function. After you differentiate the, the exponential function, you get a brand new function, right? And you should be ex ex excited and not give up, you know, not giving up. Yeah, so there's a two type of people in the world, right? One is you try to solve the problem, you, you hit the lock and you give up, okay? Another type of people just find, oh, there is a problem here. I cannot use a traditional idea to solve it. Then if you continue work on that, then you do, then you become a famous scientist. <laughs> so no matter, you know, it's not necessarily science or anything, any subject, any of, you know, any work, any job, you will face something new problems you have to solve. Even your guy fix a furnace or, or, or plumbing problems, the small problems you have to solve there, you know. Okay. So, so this is a function, okay? We put aside, we get a formula, that's it. All right, and then, then the, let's spend a little bit time to understand this function. First of all, this function is defined, is defined for all a positive, right? And uh, if, 
when a equals one, what is the value? When a equals one, this is uh, going to be one to the h minus one. So this is always equal to zero, okay? A equals one zero. So this could be negative, right? So if uh, if a is negative, for a negative, uh, for a less than uh, less than one, what do you get? For a less than one, a to the h, okay? This is going to be less than one, okay? I'm talking about a positive h, okay? Then I think, I think, uh, I guess the L of A should be negative because this is a limit, right? The numerator is negative, so I, I'm more likely it's gonna be negative, okay? So if A is part greater than one, this is uh, going to be positive. Okay, because a to the h is greater than one, because uh, for 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 h positive. Okay, so when you let h approach zero from the from the positive side, okay, the denominator is positive, the numerator is positive. That's why I think uh, this should be positive. So you get a pretty good idea. Okay, you get a pretty good idea about the, about the graph of this function. Okay, so this is A, uh, I can call it B, it doesn't matter, you know, B equals A of A. So when the X, so when A equals one, this is gonna be zero, right? And then here's negative, here's a positive, okay? So this is a kind of graph, okay? We also should know what is the limit of uh, when, the X, when A approaches infinity. Okay, what is the limit of n when a approaches infinity? What is the limit of when a approaches zero? Okay, so further study will give you more information about this a function. But anyway, you get this function. If you are the first person and you know, publishes a paper and give some, uh, uh, you know, some results about this function, then it will be named after you, right? Uh, <coughs> so, yeah, All right. So I'm a particularly interested in the case, uh, uh, I try to find, you see the function, assuming that this function is increasing, okay? So mathematicians sh can show that uh, this function is not, it, yeah, the more important factor are further in, uh, uh, other properties of this function is L of A is the increasing function and the limit as a approaches zero from positive side is going to be negative infinity. And the limit as a approach uh, infinity is going to be positive infinity, okay? So that means the graph looks like that, okay? I, I want to know uh, what, I draw a horizontal line and I get a unique number, that number called E, okay? So, um, so here's the definition of the number E, the number E, okay? Number E should be greater than one, which is defined to be, yeah, defined by this identity, okay? It's a, mis it's a mystery number, okay? Yeah. So this is, a, uh, this is a number, right? Now using this number, and uh, we don't know, we can estimate this number later. But using this number, uh, this is a number did not exist before, right? It, did not, it was not discovered, okay? Only when we study, after we study, you know, this kind of functions, right? So this is a special number, I call it E, you know, you say, oh, that's E, I remember. So in the world, there are two special numbers. One is pi, irrational number. E is also irrational number. Okay, this is also a very important number. And uh, if you're using that number, then you have, okay, as the following uh, identity because L of E equals one. So, so we have the derivative of E to the X is E to the X, L of E, right? Because L of E is one, so it's E, to the x. Yeah, so e to the x is the only function in the world. Its derivative 
is going to be itself. Wow. Okay. So that's why this E is so special. After you study calculus, the, the number E shows up, you know. After you study geometry in the in the in the element the middle school, you got to, you 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 learn the number pi, right? Now you get in the college, so you start derivatives. So you're wondering is there any function whose derivative is itself? Right? It's not changed. When you differentiate sine, you get a cosine. When you differentiate cosine, you get a sine, right? Negative sine. So the function changes after you differentiate. But there is the one function in the world when you differentiate, you never change. Okay, so the derivative e to the x is the still same self. But how do you find it? Whoa, it's finding, yeah. We find this a special number. This is a this is special number. We don't know the exact value of it. No. Okay. But if you use a calculator, it tells you like a 2.7 something. Okay. All right, that's good. So this is a, a very important formula. Yeah, uh, we use an E means the initial exponential. I believe that. So E is associated with the exponential function. All right, let's take a look at the examples. So why? Because e to the kx. Or this can be e to the kx, right? Let's find out the derivative. dy dx is going to be the Okay, so use a channel, right? Use a channel. Use a channel, you will get, okay? Use a channel, you will get e to the kx and the d, okay? So your answer will be k times e to the kx, right? Clear, right? Just use a channel, yeah. And more details like this, uh, you let u to be kx. So you differentiate e to the u, right? With respect to x. Then you differentiate with respect to u, then differentiate u with respect to x. And that is going to e to the u and the du dx, right? Okay. So, so u is a kx. Now that's, we focus on this part, right? Now, how about, how about the other one? If you use this, okay, and this will be A, right? According to our formula, this is going to be A to the X. This is A, right? So A to the X. And then L of E to the X. Good. So we will get e to the kx and l of k. Wow, I find out, I find another important identity, right? It's a discovery, you know, right? What I find out is, is l of e to the x, uh, e to the k is going to be k. k is any real number. Right, right, k is any constant. So this is a relationship. Wow, this tells me what? Dr. Shin? Yes. Sorry to interrupt. When up above, when we were doing the derivative, we were using chain rule, correct? Yeah, this is a chain rule, yeah. Chain rule. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Chain rule, okay. I focus on the first expression. You know, there's two expressions, e to the kx can be e to the k into the x, right? So I use the first expression, use a chain rule, I get this. Then I use a second expression, just consider like a, a to the x, a is the e to the k. Then I have a, I know I remember, right? The derivative of a to the x is going to be a to the x, l of a, right? So we introduce that. So if you go around, then you find out 
uh, using this, right? So I point here. So now you compare those two. <laughs> yeah, you compare those two, you find out huh, this identity. Then what, what does it tell you? This tells you that L of, L of uh, X is the inverse function of e to the x. Okay. Yeah, because uh, only when it's e, uh, you know if it's the inverse function, then you put the e to the x, you get x, right? So that okay, this is the only explanation. L x is the inverse function. Okay. So uh, so we discover uh, we get a yeah we discover that this L x is, is just the 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 inverse function. Okay. So we are going to denote yeah denote the denote LNX, we're gonna change the name, right? Denote LX by LNX, okay? All right, so now we have, okay, we can write another formula. A to the X equals A to the X match log of a because L and A, right? Yeah. All right. So we got, and we already uh, spend a little bit of time on, you know, how does the graph look like? Okay, so graph looks like, and here's the one, this is a Y equals L and A. All right, uh, so we will pay more attention to the, we will study the, this inverse function later, okay? So let's focus on um, our exponential uh, uh, function, uh, use the base E. All right, so let's take a look at the next problem. Find uh, an equation of the tangent line. To the graph of this equation. Okay, at the point zero and one. Now, what does it mean? Okay. So, if you have an equation in two variables and so on, that equation okay, determines a bunch of points on the, in the xy plane. So, those points form a curve. All right. And the curve not necessarily to be small, sometimes disconnect, it's possible. But first of all, let's see, this curve passing through the point zero and one, because when X equals zero, Y equals one, and this is indeed equal to one. So this is a point on the curve. And it's harder to draw the graph, right? And when X equals zero, Y equals one. So this is the graph. The graph passing through this point. But uh, I cannot draw the graph. You know, maybe I just draw like, like that. And you ask me why is not why going down, not going up, right? I don't know. I cannot tell. I just just anyway draw a curve passing through the point. Later on, can modify it based on the sign and the derivative. So I needed to find uh, the slope of the tangent line. The slope the slope okay, is going to be the derivative y with respect to x when x equals zero, y equals one. So to find the derivative, I needed to apply the implicit differential method to that equation. I cannot solve for y in terms of x, no way, right? Yeah. This is the equation three terms containing two terms with, with the y variable. And uh, I cannot solve the y. Okay. But I still can find the derivative. Okay. How can I do it? Yeah, I cannot express y in terms of x using elementary function. Okay. So how can I do that? 
a differentiable sign with respect to x. Okay. <laughs> right. A differential this. Okay, can you do that? I want to, you know, I hope you still remember, okay? All you needed to use about formula. The derivative of exponent e to the x is going to itself. Okay. Yeah, you can try if you have a piece of paper. Okay. What you have to be very careful is about uh, what is have to be very careful is that if you need to use this for identity, right? But if I change the uh, x to y, then you have to e to the y and the dy with the x. Okay, that's a channel. This is a channel. Okay. All right, about, uh, so this one, you get two terms by product, right? The first one with differentiate x with respect to x is just one. Then you keep this e to the y and the dy over dx. And how about those two terms? You differentiate y with respect to x, then y and the e to the x. Right? You uh, uh, use a product, and this side is going to zero. So you add them together, and that should be equal to zero. The derivative one with respect to x is zero. So you, right, then you have uh, two options. One is to find the general formula for the derivative. And uh, that's just a little bit too complicated. All you need is to find the, the value of the derivative at, at when x equals one, y equals one. Or when x equals zero, y equals one. So at x equals zero, y equals one. The above formula is going to be one times e to the one plus zero. It's kill there, right? Second term because there's a term x there. And the plus m because that's a, the, the slope e to the zero plus one e to the zero. Okay. That's going to be zero. So clearly, m, that, then this is a much simpler formula, right? It's e e plus one, right? This is a negative number. Yeah. You can find the general formula first for the derivative in terms of x and y and evaluate at x equals zero, y equals one. That's fine, no problem. But it's a little bit more complicated, okay? So now you get this. Once you get that, you can find the equation, linear equation for the opinion of life. You already know the slope and the y minus one equals the slope times x minus zero. So that is the equation for the formula. Right. All right. All right now, yeah, let's look at this one, you know. This is a, uh, let me repeat again. This is an MEU directly. It's a wonderful function. It's a unique function. It's a derivative to itself. Okay. This is an explanational uh, 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 function. Right. If you really want to know the graph, right, this is a graph that we have, and when this is the one. Okay. When x equals one, the, the height of that point is e. So when we, okay, that's all we need to do. And when you differentiate, you get the same value. Right. In other words, at every point, the slope of the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line is going to be the height of that point. Right? The height is e to the x, right? It's a point A, and here's A and the e to the A, right? So the slope of the tangent line, okay, 
at the point A and the E to the A is, is E to the A. That's the height, right? So when it's getting high and high, the slope is getting larger and larger. Right? So it grows very fast. Well, yeah, we're going to talk about growth rate, expansion growth. If, now, for example, the population, right? If based on the past data, the population, the growth rate of the population may be 0 0.5, even 0 0.5 annually, right? Then it is exponential growth. So that means if, if everything is good, you know, no war, no violence, okay? And uh, everybody's mentally healthy. Yeah, that's also very important, okay? Then uh, nothing biologically, nothing change, you know, genetically nothing change. Then the population and enough food on the earth, then the population will go, go, it grows faster, faster, faster. Okay, eventually every inch on the world there is a human being there. Okay, that's impossible, right? So even there's no war, no violence, possibly uh, the human being we're not going to produce two more babies. Yeah, that's the that's already proved by the experiment. They put the rats in the some container. Yeah, at the end of the no 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 rats uh, was interested in produce next generation. Okay, that's possible. Yeah. Okay. So 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 the growth rate will be not constant, but suppose it's constant. We can do the modeling. Yeah, later it's called exponential growth. All right, our next problem is about the maximum value, minimum value problem. It's about uh, find the absolute minimum value of this function, e to the x of x, okay, over on this line from zero to infinity. This is an open integral, okay? And why this function has a absolute minimum value? Well, uh, let's make a simple observation. So when, uh, when x approaches zero from the positive side, the numerator approaches one, but the denominator approaches zero. So this is going to be positive, positive infinity. But when x approaches infinity, the numerator grows faster than x, faster, faster than x, right? So you, you can imagine the limit should be infinity. So how does the graph look like? The graph looks like that, okay? So somewhere it has a, a certain minimum value. We have to find out, okay? So if the function has a maximum minimum value, well, has a, has a local minimum value, first of all, you can only find the local minimum, right? Then if only if, uh, at some point, if only if, yeah, this implies a function has a minimum, uh, has, a, has a zero derivative, right? So we recall that, right? Recall that f of x has a local minimum, Mean, mean, mean value at some a, okay. Then f comma a should be zero, okay. That's a necessary condition, not not sufficient, but that's good enough for we to narrow down the candidates, right? You cannot have too many candidates, otherwise, it's no way you can figure it out. All right, so let's take a look at the derivative. You have to differentiate this function, right? <coughs> but, so I get x squared, and then I differentiate this x. 
minus e to the x and uh, the derivative. This is, this is a quotient, right? Right. So now, what do I get? So I get e to the x, x minus e to the x. x squared. Wow. That's a common factor here, right? I set this to be zero. So e to the x will never be zero. So this implies x must be equal to one. So if the function has a minimum value and it only occurs at one, and that is obvious from the picture, both sides goes to infinity, right? So clearly, clearly f has and uh, has a uh, absolute minimal value f of one at x equal to one. Okay, so you can if you want to find the value, just evaluate f of one is again e to the one of one which is e. Right. Yeah, you don't need to even look at whether the function is decreasing, whether the function is increasing on both sides. But you can you can tell from the derivative. You can tell from the derivative, okay? You can tell the derivative. You know, the derivative tells you, right? It can tell it tells you the sign, right? And uh, when x is a, uh, uh, yeah, this will be negative if x is between one and zero, right? It's a positive if x is greater than one, right? Because x minus one. So the graph looks like that. Decreasing here's one and then increasing here. So this must be the absolute minimal value of the function. Okay, decreasing and increasing. So using the derivative, you can tell the behavior of the function uh, on both sides of the critical point. Right, that's a really good example, and uh, we can uh, take, we can do another problem, similar problem. Okay, okay. So it's, the idea is very simple. If the function has a maximum uh, minimal value at some point, at that point, necessary condition must be the critical point. Then we just find the derivative and find it. Then you have to convince me why the function has a maximum minimal value, and then look at the sign of the derivative. Left hand side negative decreases. Right hand side positive increases. So, so this must be the lowest point. But this is open interval problem, right? Now we are look at the closed interval. So we have a function x e to the x over two. Right? If this is a function of three negative three and one. Find the the absolute maximal and the minimal value, right? Definitely it has maximum minimal values, right? It's possible it occurs at the end point, right? It's possible it occurs at the end point. Right? Yeah, how to do that, right? This is a continuous function. So it's possible, uh, if it's closed interval, you just want to find that absolute maximum and absolute minimum. All you, do, all you need to know, you don't need to know how does, the, how, does, uh, uh, how does the graph look like. You just narrow down the candidate for the point at which the function has a as possible, you know, as, as a absolute maximum, as a local maximum value or local minimum value. Okay? Then you choose the largest possible value and choose the smallest possible value among them. All right, so first of all, we have to do is find the derivative. When you differentiate product rule, right? So then the x prime and x e to the x over t. That's one, and then it, I differentiate like this. So now I got this. If I set this to zero, and what you can get? 
you got one, only one critical number. <laughs> right? You got only one critical number. So x equals negative two. And this is a inside the interval. Great. So there's only one critical number in the interval. What does it mean? That means if the function <coughs> attains the absolute even you know local minimum value or local maximum value at some point inside the interval, and that point is the only possible point is x equals negative two. Okay, no other choice. So if we want to find absolute maximum value, all you have to do is just look at the value of function at the sweep at the two end points at this critical number. Okay, so let's take a look at an f negative three. Okay, so that would be negative three e to the negative three over two. I have to do some estimate. And f negative two, e, uh, this is negative two e to the negative two over two. So it's going to be negative one. Then f of one is going to be e to the one half. So clearly this is a positive, but I want to know which one is larger of these two numbers. So this is a definitely uh, f of one is going to be the absolute maximum value. No question about that, right? But I want to know which one is large of the other two. Okay. Right? Yeah. Without using calculate, how can I how can I do that? All right, so I'm going to do, uh, I just take a look at these two numbers. Okay, I take a look at these two numbers. All right, I, you know, if this number is greater than one, then, then it because there's a negative sign there, right? So be careful about three over two and e to the, e to the, well, e to the negative one half. So I can have three over two e to the one half. Okay. And but then what? I cannot find the square root e, right? That's okay. I can I can write to this, right? Okay, so this is going to be 1.5 square and the e one half. But 1.5 square is, uh, you can do the calculation, use a calculator, right? So, and you remember the rough uh, uh, estimate of the E, right? So let's see, okay? 1.5 times 1.5, it's gonna be 2.25, okay? And that's E and then one half. 2.25 is less than E, okay, because the E is a 2.718, if I remember correct, e is about 2.718, so this is less than one. Okay. Yeah, you have to remember uh, uh, approximation of the number E, okay? Uh, this is uh, just like a pi, you know, pi is 3.17, about 3.17. All right, so that means 3E to the negative 3 over 2 is less than 2E to the negative 1, but if we put a negative sign there, Okay, so this will be the absolute minimal value. Okay, so that's smaller than other one. Okay. This is F negative two, it's F negative three. But yeah, that is uh, what we got, right? We usually have a, a no uh, policy uh, calculate, but since we are given a test online, so we don't we don't ask you to you know you can use a calculator, but we what you cannot do is to to cheat on the test. Okay, uh, 
So we will find a way to avoid that at the end. So don't try to think about these options. It can be easily discovered in the instructions. Okay. So all you have to do is to improve your, uh, you know, you know, you have to understand the material. And because I, if I ask you how to do this, how to do that, you say, I forgot, I don't know. I mean, you cannot say that, okay? So then we have to retest it, okay? So if you get 100% on finding them, you become the <laughs> suspect. So we have to, we, sometimes we do double check. Okay, Techless, if you can answer the questions, uh, uh, maybe we have to find a way to give you tests. Uh, uh, in uh, in the testing center, okay. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, we 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 do find some cases like that before. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Let's let let's take a look at the next problem. This is about integral. You know, remember the derivative of e to the x is going to be e to the x. Okay. Or more generally, the derivative of e to the k x is going to be k times e to the kx. So if we integrate, yeah, so the integral of the function e to the e to the kx dx is going to be just as the antiderivative of this function plus constant, right? Okay. So if you see the integral k e to the kx, then immediately you can write down the entire derivative function plus constant. All right, so let's take a look at the following problem. Evaluate the integral of, uh, of this function. Right? So this is nothing but e to the negative x dx, right? So the entire derivative of that function will be negative you know, e to the negative way. Excellent, divided by negative, all right? K is negative way. So evaluate the two and the point. Minus negative to plus. Okay. So the answer will be one minus one over two square. Okay. Okay, our next problem. Yeah, evaluate the integral. This is the indefinite integral, right? How do you do that? It's a very complicated. All right, so how do you do that? It's a very complicated one. And uh, so we can try to use a substitution, okay? We're trying to use a substitution and that is going to be, that's u to be one plus e to the negative x, okay? And then du equals the derivative of u with respect to x and dx, right? And the derivative of u with respect to x is going to be the derivative of one zero, the root of e to the x is now e to the x and the dx. All right, that's good enough. All right, in other words, it's going to be one over e to the x dx. So clearly, this is going to be square root u, and, and, and this part is just negative du. Right? 
So now you converted the index integral to index integral in, in, in one single variable, u. And then we know how to evaluate this integral because it's getting negative. Uh, here's u to the one half u, right? Using the formula. Okay, about this. All right, so now, now you will get, uh, here's a two over three, and u to the three over two plus three. That's not a final answer yet. You have to go back, replace u by one plus e to the negative x. Okay. So, uh, so if we have a in, uh, if we have a the general right, let's go back to the the explanation function. Okay, so I know dy dx equals a to the x, right? Natural a, right? And uh, and uh, a could be <laughs> so the this nature log a is the inverse function of a to the x. Now oh, wait a minute, it is uh, e to the x. Yeah. E e to the a, I use the variable a here, not x. Okay. So, so that means So that means uh, uh, yeah, that means the nature log of e to the to the a, right? It's gonna be a. Yeah. So how about a? Uh, can we spread a to the e to the k? So what is k? Right? We, we express a to the e to the k. So that means k is going to be natural of a. Right? Yeah, that's fine. So k is natural. So now we're going to derivative differentiate a to the x again. <laughs> and that is an e to the k, right? X. Okay. And we know that that's going to be k e to the k x. What is k? K is natural log of a. e to the k x, right? But kx is going to be e to the kx is just a to x. So you you get you get yeah you get the formula back again. So you don't know which one is first, you know, chicken first or egg first. Okay? Anyway, so we have uh, so let's go over this. We 
we differentiate the exponential function and uh, it leads to an, a new function called natural log of a, okay? And that natural log of a is the inverse function of a, that leads to two things, the derivative leads to the number e and also leads to the inverse function of uh, e, e to the x, okay? So this is a, a yeah, so you, you, when you differentiate the derivative of the exponential function gave us to the derivative, okay, the derivative, the derivative gives us two things. One is the number e, other one is the natural log of e, okay, a natural log of uh, a, okay, that's gave us two things. <clears throat> the natural log is going to be the, the inverse function of e to the x, okay? And those are the formulas. Uh, yeah, this is the formulas we can get, you know, we can go around and finally scale, come back to the original starting point, okay? Uh, so this is a, the natural log function is the inverse function of the, of the, yeah, of the, of the e, expanding from e to the x. Now, this e, let me talk about the e here. The e also comes from a different number, okay? e is going to be a limit, it's one plus one over n to the n. This is a coming from the compound interest rate, okay? Compound interest rate. And why this is true, okay? Why this is true? Okay, so you, you can use this one to estimate the number e. Yeah, we can, I think we can prove this later, but this is the way you can estimate, okay? This, if you want to get an estimate, this can be one over 100 and two over 100. Okay, and you can use a calculator to check. Yeah, what is, uh, if you have a scientific calculator, if you enter, yeah, if you try to enter 1.01 .01 to the power 100, okay, as long as you have this button, and you can get a good estimate. Okay. Ah. Yeah, let's try. Okay, my, my cell phone, I do have this, this one. Uh, I don't know how to use it. <laughs> So 1.01 .01 and uh, to the power function, right? And then 100, yeah. So my character tells me it's about 2.7048. It's not a good approximation. It should be 2.718, but this is not good enough. But if you use a, if you use a 1,000, uh, you probably can get better, okay? So one point zero uh, zero one okay to the power one thousand yeah so yeah so then uh, you will see that and you, you get a much better estimate two point seven one six nine okay so it's better it's getting closer so if you choose one million it's almost you know, it's the number we want. So this is a, this is a, about the number E. So get an idea, you should memorize the approximate values 2.718, okay? Actually E is about 2.718. But this is the number you need to memorize uh, for the exponential function. It grows faster than, so that means the, this is an exponential function. So E, e to the X uh, is greater than two, two to the x, right? Less than three to the x. It's between those two uh, exponential function. Okay, it's between those two exponential function. So uh, yeah, let me uh, stop here today.